What about you, buddy? Ready to go to work? You're putting him in the field? Are you crazy? He just transferred in a week ago. You've seen his training results. His reflexes are totally off the charts. First person shooters are pretty much a dime a dozen these days, and if you had to ask what my favorite first person shooter game would be, chances are I'd have to go with Fear. Fear was released October 18, 2005 for Microsoft Windows, developed by Monolith Productions, a company who has had experience developing first person shooter games and published by Vivendi Universal. Uh, they're pretty much not around these days, of course. Fear follows the story of the Point Man, a rookie for the first encounter assault recon team, or Fear for short, who is tasked with tracking down and investigating a lunatic known as Paxton Fettel, a commander trained by Armacam Technology Corporation to lead an army known as Replicas. In the opening cutscene, you learn that Fettel has pretty much gone insane and started killing everything that he sees. And this puts the plot of fear into motion. As you progress through the game, you start to learn more about Fettel, as well as a secret project conducted by Armacam known as Project Origin, which is something that Armacam is attempting to cover up, as you soon learn in the game. Throughout the story, you uncover phone messages, laptops, and radios, which honestly help flesh out a simplistic story of investigate a crazy person into a story about cruelty and experiment gone awry, revenge, and the imminent backlash surrounding the arrogant choices of Armacam and its CEO, Genevieve Varis. Mike, what the hell is going on over there? It sounded like an explosion. I can't get through to anybody. Call me back. End of message. As you play through the game, the point man starts seeing hallucinations and visions regarding a little girl named Alma. By the last interval of the game, your knowledge of Alma, Fettel, and Armacan become clearer, and you realize that Alma is a sympathetic antagonist. She's looking for revenge against the crimes committed against her, and you just so happen to be caught in the middle, but for a reason. A very good reason. Or, sort of. This subtle story of fear and its backstory are written very well. It sidelines the traditional cinematic style for one that never leaves your point of view, similar to a game like Half-Life, released by Valve. The story heavily relies on the player's ability to explore the level and listen to anything that the player may find throughout the level. And honestly, if you take away the story element, then Fear is pretty much a straightforward FPS, as it relies heavily on first-person action, as opposed to first-person survival horror. But what sets the game apart is the point man's ability to slow time in what is known as slow-mo, a series staple since the first game, of course. Nothing is more satisfying. On harder difficulties, you pretty much have to rely on this ability as the enemy AI. It was pretty intelligent, something that was unprecedented for 2005. Instead of waiting for you to fire, the replicas will throw grenades, use cover, and try to flank you. At about the last third of the game, it all starts to feel a bit repetitive though, and it can almost seem like a chore to play through at times. But what saves the game is the subtle moments of creepiness and unsettling atmosphere, which end up being really effective. One moment you're in a dark tunnel, then you see a little girl appear a few feet in front of you for a few seconds. This is all aided by the Lithtech Jupiter Extended Game Engine, which provides the game with crisp textures, excellent shadows, and amazing particle effects, which still look good in 2015. Overall, the first Fear game is a very solid shooting and horror experience with a deceptively engrossing story, clocking in about 9 hours. And it's one that is an easy recommendation to anyone who is a fan of Japanese horror and first-person shooters. 